The federal government has postponed the launch of the much-anticipated Nigerian Students' Loan Scheme indefinitely. This was conveyed by the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund, Akintunde uh, Sawyer, during an interview. The bill, which was proposed by former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Miller, passed third reading in the lower chamber on May 23, 2023. But despite initial plans, the program's commencement was delayed, with uh, President Tinubu announcing a new start date for January 2024 after missing the October deadline. Well, in January, Minister of State for Education, Yusuf Sununu, confirmed that preparations, including the creation of the Student Loan Scheme website and program implementation planning, were completed. However, just 48 hours before the scheduled launch, Sawyer announced the postponement of the loan scheme due to ongoing corrections required before the launch. The National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS member, have expressed its disappointment, stated that it has lost hope in the federal government's education loan scheme. And that begs the question, who wouldn't? Well, joining us uh, this morning, we do have Dean, Faculty of Social and Management Science, University of Berlin Kerbi. Thank you so much for being here, Professor Tuka Mohammed Baba. It's, uh, it's good to have you join us uh, this morning. Thank you so very much. I'm happy to be here. All right, great. Um, first off, uh, let's get your viewpoint on the current situation concerning the student loan scheme. It was one of the most or one of the biggest anticipations, especially for students and Nigerians alike. Parents were also looking forward to send their children to school and eventually heave a sigh of relief when it comes to paying uh, for the school fees and the likes. And now it has been postponed indefinitely. A date not yet given, but January 2024 mentioned, uh, 2025, hopefully, I beg your pardon, or when. But then again, what's your take on this uh, uh, suspension or this complete uh, loss of hope for students? Let's start with the very principle of the policy, which is very good. Uh, any support, financial especially to our students as they pursue tertiary education is very good. To come to the uh, uh, postponement, if we come fast forward, it's a bit of a disappointment, but it's not surprising. In the sense that there is something invidious about this uh, regime, in this uh, current APC government in power. That is to say, policies are released or announced without adequate background preparations as to it, it's their implementation, how, where, and so on. So when the person was announced, I was so surprised. There is a problem there. Uh, of course, there, uh, there was a rush to implement populist policies, even policies that are not good for the, well, I mean, they, at least they are very controversial uh, for the populist. We make announcements, or rather the government makes announcements without adequate background preparations. If you ask me, the principle is very good, it's welcome, but it is disappointing that thoughts were not given to implementation how and so on so this one that is now coming on board that it has been postponed a date will be announced it's uh, it's uh, predictable yeah you can predict that this will happen because there was no adequate preparations uh, sometimes we rush to copy what is going on in other countries forgetting the other factors that are available that, that form the context of those policies in Nigeria, in order to uh, implement such schemes, you need to prepare very well. How is it going to be implemented and so on? So, uh, in short, the principle is good. The announcement is a disappointment. Three, it is not surprising because this is characteristics of this regime. Remember the brohaha regarding the fuel subsidy, which was announced without adequate preparation. Uh, what do you call it? Distribution of five billion Naira palliative to states nationwide was quickly announced. There was no preparation of how. I mean, how are you going to implement it? On what basis are you doing the allocation? And especially if you do it so uh, evenly, everyone gets 5,000, 500, uh, 5 billion. On the basis of our land, 
on the basis of population and so on. These were not done. So this is the major disappointment against every intention of this government. If one would prefer to see adequate preparation on implementation, this is so that the general public like you and I will contribute. Yes, you want to do this, but there is this. Yeah. And so, so uh, this is my, these are my thoughts. All right. Well, you know, I, I did have a similar argument earlier, you know, that it's a government that focuses, you know, mostly on propaganda and, you know, how it can sell itself instead of actually doing, you know, what needs to be done. It's figuring out ways that they can sell good stories about themselves every day. Um, but, you know, I want to ask, you know, you repeatedly said it's a good, you know, idea. Um, but is Nigeria really even ready for that? And if we have 5, 10, 15 billion that we were willing to invest in the student loan, don't, wouldn't you also argue that we maybe could have redirected those funds and even more into you know, making our universities better first before looking for, you know, or giving people loans to go to those same universities. We currently have a seemingly very deplorable um, educational system. It's not, it's not in its, its best shape. So shouldn't we be redirecting those funds into fixing our university system, educational system, before we start giving out loans? Well, there is no doubt about that. You know, earlier, if, I, if you remember, I said, if we're going to borrow such schemes, which exist in places like the United States, Britain, and others, we, yeah. need, we needed to have prepared adequately for it. Because the general context of the societies are different. If you ask me, I would have preferred a situation where the federal government will determine the tuition fees in at least the public schools and abolish the tuition fees for the payment of tuition fees by students and pay the, 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 the fees directly to the universities and then set up a committee that will be monitoring the utilization of the funds by the universities. Meanwhile, the students pay zero uh, fees, or oh, for that matter, as some token fee. So uh, it's like other policies. Instead of throwing money, maybe we should improve infrastructure. Instead of making announcements, maybe we should make uh, available drugs in hospitals so that when the ordinary man in the street goes to the hospital, they know they don't have to worry about the cost of drugs. And I would like, I would have loved to see that for the universities and other tertiary institutions, that the facility is available free to the students or at the very minimal fee. But then there is a monitoring to see how these funds are utilized. And the universities must submit plans. These are what uh, the government is giving you in lieu of payment of fees by the students. What are you going to do with it? How will it improve conditions in the university? How will it make uh, learning conducive for the students so that they are stress-free, not to worry? Uh, in a lot of the universities, at least that I know of, I have heard that there is a slow process of registration because a lot of the fees being imposed now cannot be afforded by the students. So, you know, people are looking for money, and I agree with you that this money should have been utilized direct, should have been given direct to the universities with adequate preparations for and then, you know for monitoring this we are giving this university one five hundred million like I like I had has been given to some senators. How will you use it? This is in lieu of fees that you will charge Nigerian students. How will you utilize the fees to uh, make learning conducive uh, classrooms? facilities, and so on. Obviously, when you throw money at a problem, just like that, then there is a danger that the person you throw the money into has no capacity to utilize it rationally. Then there is a problem. Yeah. And I, this is what I want this country to move away from, throwing money at problems. You see, psychologically, it is an established fact that when you give people suddenly a lot of wealth, they are not prepared to manage it. It's the same thing when people who are wealthy suddenly find themselves at the bottom of the poverty line. There is a problem. So a careful planning.
how do we utilize this money? In what areas should they be deployed? Do we have a monitoring committee for monitoring and evaluation? And then, of course, uh, 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 holding people responsible, accountability. So this is what I would have preferred to say. In short, I agree with you. Yeah. It's better uh, deployed also, by the government to specific actions and plans. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we could also have both of them, you know, working hand, you know, hand by, um, side by side. I mean, you could, you know, deploy more money to the educational sector and, uh, you know, in, in, improve on the quality of universities that we have, while at the same time have your student loan. But, you know, unfortunately, this one has turned out. But does this also paint a picture for you about what we prioritize as a country? You know, and how education, you know, is maybe not one of the government's biggest priorities. And that's why they can, you know, play this kind of propaganda with it. Well, it's unfortunate that there is more uh, propaganda than actual action by governments. And uh, this is disappointing. But at the same time, you see, uh, I think in the background, we need to probably pity the government. There is much expectation from the populace. What you do is to hold back, plan. Such investments take time to manifest. In education, for example, what I think will happen is uh, addressing the infrastructural problems, most uh, importantly. Then, uh, rationalize access. Who should go to the universities and so on? Under what conditions? You address them. Uh, if you don't do that, chances are you are going to be running in all directions, what is called uh, shambolic. You act, as soon as this issue comes, you rush and throw money at it. As another issue comes, you run and throw money at it. You lose the big picture. So, uh, uh, in short, I think the, the problems are not totally irredeemable. The government needs to go back. Forget about propaganda. Think and focus on impact. How do you achieve the impact? By doing things correctly, by doing things rationally, by taking the government, the public alone in the debate. It's not just to sit down in Abuja, in Asorok, and say, oh, okay, we'll give students loan. Oh, okay, we will, uh, we will feed students in school. And then you don't look around and say, you know, what exactly does that mean? So uh, this is the problem with this, with this government. And of right. course, with many governments that are more concerned with propaganda. But in the educational sector, for example, when you do that, you do not expect results in six months. You do not expect to see visible impact in one year, two years, and so on. It takes about five to 10 years, but it needs patience. It needs careful planning. It needs a rational allocation of resources and so on. Uh, most people, when they see you doing this methodically, step by step, systematic, even if the impact is not there, people will say, oh, yes, uh, this will take about five to ten years and so on. For example, let's begin from basic education. Any plans you have on ground now, we will see the visible uh, allocation of resources, but we should take about uh, 12 years to see what is the impact in terms of enrollment, in terms of graduation, and so on. So what the government should do instead of rushing project is to take the public along, sit down and have a program in place so that people can follow well, one, infrastructure, two, improve other conditions, laboratories, and so on, four, make access available. Uh, five, we, within three to six months, we will make sure all broken down furniture and equipment are, are repaired and so on, so that nobody will have an argument that this has not been done, this has not been done. But right now what you are doing is you are running in all directions with regards to the student loan. Like I said, I support the government that any, any financial assistance, but please, Finances are limited in every society. So when you deploy public resources, do it systematically, uh, step by step, and do it such that at every stage you are monitoring the impact of the interventions 
that uh, you throw. Yeah, all right. So, all right. Let, let, let me let, permit me to. I, I think we've we've spoken. I mean, I'm just looking at our time, and since we've touched on um, uh, the student loan, I'd lo also like to get your thought on the recent happenings, especially at the Senate. Permit me to deviate a bit. You're also a spokesperson for the Ar um, Arawa Consultative Forum. Um, what's your thought on the recent happening uh, at the Senate, especially with the um, Senator Ningi, who has been suspended? And we're talking about the 3.7 trillion Naira uh, padding. I mean, you wouldn't come on this show and we would let you go without um, getting your input on that. Fair enough. If this is a public debate. First of all, let me make it clear I'm speaking in, uh, for myself as a public analyst, especially as a scholar in the universities. Uh, to go directly to the issue, you know, you of uh, limited time. Let me say this. My disappointment at the happening happenings in the Senate regarding this issue is more that we are focusing on the messenger rather than the message. This is the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There should be robust debate on policies. There should be robust debates on the, the budget allocations. There should be a rugged defense, uh, de uh, debate on what should be done. But when you rush, uh, what we say, ad harmony, you focus on the passenger. The messenger shouldn't have spoken. For God's sake, this is a democratic regime headed by the president, in, by name, uh, Senator, uh, now His Excellency Bola Tinibu. Let's go back. He made his impact on national politics by engaging in robust debate. Remember, he emerged with first up about him from the, the movement against the military. And every one of us was there. So why do we stop people from talking? It's rather disappointing, uh, as I hear. Oh, the, the, the Senator Ningi should not have spoken. Oh, this is something else. Oh, he got it wrong. Oh, uh, what of other northerners who are quiet and so on? You are focusing on the messenger and you forget the bigger picture. If the Senator Ningi spoke and spoke about uh, the allocation, unexplained allocation, of 3.7 billion. I don't expect you to start abusing uh, Senator Ningi. I don't expect you to suspend him. Because uh, a philosopher once said, if a system allow, uh, stops you from asking questions, there is something it doesn't want you to find out. So uh, you ask me, it's a bit disappointing. I would have preferred to see concentration the, uh, on the issue. The general public should be told, was there any budget padding or not? Was there any allocation of unexplained, allocation to money to unexplained resources uh, or not? If after you establish the fact, you find that Senator Ningi, or any senator for that matter, like the senator who said, some senators got 500 million naira, and I uh, looked at some of the, some of the allocations of uh, funds. It seems to me, it seems to me that the Senate, the legislature, is going into policy implementation, which in political theory, basic political theory, will say that uh, tends to spoil the, the concept of the uh, suppression of powers. Why do legislators go into policy uh, implementation with specific projects? If, in fact, they want constituency project, I would expect they allow the executive to do that. And they are engaged in monitoring. They are engaged in seeing to it that there is a rational allocation of resources by the executive. But when a senator or any legislator, for that matter, goes into having specific allocations, and I have seen uh, allegations on, the, uh, on social media, all that... Uh, uh, some senators were asked to provide contractors who will supply grains, who will supply uh, equipment. To me, this is the function of the legislature. Uh, this is the function of the executive, excuse me, not the legislature. When a, senate, when a legislator uh, begins to be interested in contracts, in contractors, and so on, and I think we're losing the essence right. of 
uh, uh, the separation. I also want to ask. And then we lose, we lose. What we lose is a robust debate on this policy. So yeah. people are uh, 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 concentrate on uh, their contractors. And so this is disappointment. This right. is a disappointment. Just, just before we have you or we wrap up, you know, I also want you to speak with regards same issue, but Senator Okwemi Bamidele from, um, I think he's representing AKT uh, Central Senatorial District, uh, basically blaming it on a tribal issue. It was, I think he was saying that uh, northern senators, you are trying to remove or have always ganged up against a Senate president from uh, the southern part of the country. And, you know, that might be what is played out here with the allegations that uh, there might be an impeachment uh, plot against uh, the current Senate president. So uh, is Senator Bamidele making, you know, some sense from your perspective? <laughs> well, after Nigerian politics, uh, maybe at the populist level. But again, this is another disappointment. The impeachment or removal of the principal officers of legislatures, whether at the national level, at the state level, or at the local government level, has always been part of us. Then, of course, the allegation that is based on regional considerations, tribal considerations. I'm surprised they have not even added the religious con uh, considerations. These are part of my earlier thing. You are concentrating on the messenger rather than the message. So that even if there is no messenger, there is no messenger, you invent, you create it. Because in Nigeria, this is what makes an immediate impact. All these primordial factors, you know, when you launch on them, of course, then people focus on that rather than on the policy. I would expect the distinguished senator to say, to address exactly the allegations. I mean, this Nigerian Senate leadership has always suffered from these changes, impeachments and so on. Right from 1999, you go back the line, Chuba Okadipo, uh, the gentleman with... Uh, multiple certificates and so on. These are part of it. Some of the spokesmen of the present government were there in opposition, pointed out. I remind you about the presidential uh, media strategies. Its role during the saga of uh, Buhari, uh, the young man from Kano who falsified his age, his qualifications, and so on. So when you resort to saying it's regional, it's tribal, and so on, well, Let's ask questions. Were there these regional and tribal factors in allocating resources? In uh, Were there controversies regarding the alleged distribution of, five million, of 500 million naira to some senators? Was it based on uh, this? This is what uh, a late historian, uh, Balaus, said is the manipulation of these factors, religion, tribe, region, for selfish reasons by our politicians. So when you point out that, hey, why, why are you doing this? Because, you know, it's on tribal factors and so on. Then you forget the larger picture. It's a disappointment. In my opinion, it's time. This country, our politicians, our policymakers, and then policy analysts move away from this uh, romantic attachment to uh, primordial uh, sentiments and so on. Uh, if there is a, there is a plot by, God, by any group of people, deal with that. What are the reasons for the plot? Can, we be, can it be addressed? Uh, is there any veracity in what is being said rather than say, oh, don't say it because you are from Aqua Ivo. Don't say it because you are from Sokoto. Don't say it because you people in Taraba uh, uh, religion and so on. No, 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 no. Let's address the issue. But again, like I said, I'm not surprised. The yeah. manipulation of primordial sentiments mm. have always been one of the basic problems of our society. That's why we are not making much progress, or rather, we are not making right. as much progress as you and I ordinarily expect. So it's a disappointment. Either it's a tribal or regional vision, address the issue. Show us how. Don't just give it the level. Like uh, one of the presidential uh, spokesmen said recently, that all oh, the banditry is because some some rash some national groups. For God's sake, this is a presidential system. If there is anybody that you can identify that is 
sabotaging the progress of the nation. That is causing confusion, causing banditry, through killing and abduction of their own people. Please, this is a presidential system. Identify them, deal with them. It's not just to make bland general statements that I we are against. You know, uh, like I All teach right. in the universities. All right. uh, and you, we, students would say, you gave me an F. And Thank I gently say, I didn't give you an F. You scored an F. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Professor Tuka. <laughs> uh, very interesting conversation we've had here for this hour. I want to thank you for your time and, most importantly, for sharing your thoughts with us uh, on matters arising. Thank you.